So this is the only chamber of its kind within the DoD. So we can bring them in here to simulate that environment and test it in here. It's the only place within the DoD that can do that indoors. I'm Tim Basler. I'm the chief engineer here in the Electromagnetic Environmental Effects Assessment and Evaluation Branch. I went to school at Penn State up in Erie, Pennsylvania, um, and um, I was looking for jobs when it was time to graduate, and I looked at various opportunities throughout uh, the country, and I found Dahlgren, and I came down here for an interview, and I fell in love with the area, I fell in love with the work, and uh, I've been here for 21 years now and uh, I've enjoyed every minute of it. When I first came to Dahlgren, I started in the electromagnetic effects division. Probably one of the last things I wanted to do coming out of college was electromagnetics. But once I got started and saw the impacts that I was having on the fleet, got me excited to be here and work in this kind of a uh, field. Being able to see all the new systems that come in, so anything that hits the fleet has to come through us for testing and evaluation beforehand. So whether it's a, a new missile, a new bomb, a new radar system, a new electronic system, whatever it is, we get the opportunity to see it hands-on first, test it out, help them make fixes if necessary to make it operate correctly. And so that's really neat. It's hands-on testing. It's, uh, it's seeing new things. It's always something different. Uh, it never gets boring. There's always a new, new system. You gotta figure out how to test it, how am I gonna operate it, um, and how am I gonna evaluate it and make sure that it's safe and operational for the warfighter. Coming to work for Dahlgren, uh, I think it's a great place to, to work. As, a, as I mentioned, there's, for us here in particular, we get to see a lot of new systems. But across the center, there's a lot of opportunities to, to work in any kind of field of you know, engineering, whether it's electrical engineering, mechanical engineering, aerospace engineering. Um, there's always something to, to trip your trigger here. There's, there's opportunities for, for changing even. If you're into an area and it doesn't maybe quite fit, you can try something else. There's always new, different, exciting things here at Dahlgren. A lot of opportunities to, to move around and, and get lots of different experiences. So an anechoic chamber is a chamber that reduces reflections of RF radio frequency energy. And we use it for testing of electronic systems. So we would bring them in here and we test them to various environments they may see when installed in shipboard spaces. So if it's on the flight deck of a ship, you have lots of radar systems, you have lots of comm systems that are creating an electromagnetic environment that electronic systems and weapons are gonna be exposed to. And we wanna make sure that they're gonna operate as intended and operate safely. And so we do different types of testing in these chambers. Uh, we do HERO testing, which is hazards of electromagnetic radiation to ordnance. We wanna make sure that that environment is not going to set off the ordnance. Then we do electromagnetic vulnerability testing where we make sure that electronic systems are gonna operate as intended when exposed to the environment. The benefit of using a chamber like this is it reduces reflections. So you can kind of think of it as simulating an open air like on the deck of a ship, we have a steel deck and then all this absorber absorbs the energy and doesn't allow it to reflect back and hit the test article. And so we can pinpoint particular areas of interest on a test article while it's in here testing. It's a $6 million uh, chamber uh, that we uh, proposed. We used to have a chamber here. Uh, it was about a quarter of the size of this one. Um, and it was just not meeting the demand that we needed for, for our future testing. And so we wanted to be able to expand our capabilities. Um, this one in particular is 85 feet by 70 feet by 24 feet tall. So we have a very large space here. Uh, we're able to pull in uh, trailers, uh, either of test articles or of our transmitting equipment that generate this uh, high power electromagnetic environment for testing. So the largest thing we can hold in this chamber is anything that we can fit through the, the large door, uh, which is 25 feet wide by 20 feet tall. So as long as it fits in there, um, we can fit it in here. We do have a weight limit of about 20 tons, so uh, we can bring vehicles in here uh, to do testing on vehicles uh, as long as they are 20 tons or less. So we test uh, all kinds of things in here from very complex missile systems to something very simple. Um, we've tested like a, essentially an ATM machine that the sailors use on board the ships because we wanna make sure that systems like that are gonna operate and also not cause a problem to other more mission critical type systems and it allows us to be able to meet the new needs of the fleet. We can bring um, high power transmitters in here, which in our old chamber we were unable to do and do testing of missiles, um, electronic systems, all those kinds of things in here. So some of the challenges that we face in a chamber like this is um, the material itself is flammable. So fire is a challenge. Uh, we wanna make sure that we're operating here in a safe manner. So we have a VESDA system. We have orange pipes that's, that uh, are sticking out from the walls. They monitor the air quality in here constantly. And so what they're doing is they're, they're looking for any small detection of smoke. It's called a very early smoke detection apparatus. And if they uh, sense any smoke in the space, obviously we don't want water in here. Millions of dollars of electronics could be in here being tested. And we don't wanna douse that with water if there is a, a smoke 
alarm that goes off. So what we have is a clean agent system, uh, which will cool the fire down enough that it won't get started. So we have different types of absorber. This one in particular has a black tip. This is the standard absorber that's on on all the walls. Um, you can see it's it's somewhat flexible, although we don't try and flex it too much. It's a carbon loaded polyurethane uh, foam. Um, the other type of absorber we have in here is this other blue absorber here, which has an extra polyurethane coating on the outside, which makes it more durable. So it can be handled more frequently. Um, that we put on the floor to allow us to move around, test articles, to reduce reflections maybe in somewhere where we're having a concern or to better simulate free flight for something, we can put it around a test article for that reason. So the absorber is shaped as a pyramid to try and help um, maximize the absorption of the RF energy. So the energy can get trapped in there, it helps focus it into areas of maximum absorption. The black absorber in particular is what makes this chamber special. Um, it's a uh, pyramid absorber that has a honeycomb uh, pattern cut into it, and that allows air to flow through it. So the absorber on most of the wall can handle 15,000 watts per meter squared. Um, that's just general air, ambient air being able to flow through it. But we do have a particular area where we have forced air coming through and it can be cooled down to in the 40s. Uh, we can push that air through the wall and that allows us to get to the really high temperature or high uh, field levels up to 50,000 watts per meter square for some of the testing that we may need to do. So airflow is important for that, but it's also important for keeping the absorber cool um, because as the RF energy is impinging on the absorber, um, as it absorbs it, it begins to heat up. And so we want to make sure that when we're putting really high powers onto the absorber, it doesn't overheat and catch fire and then, then we're in trouble. Um, and so we have uh, temperature controlled in the space for that, but also airflow through some of the absorber. So one of the other challenges is um, sometimes your uh, item under test requires some kind of support equipment, either telemetry to monitor it or power or that. And so one, we need to be able to provide clean power to it. Um, because if it's provided dirty power with a lot of noise on it, that can affect our measurements, it can affect their system. So we have filtered power in here that provides clean power to any EUT under test. Additionally, telemetry can be uh, placed outside. We have panels um, that are outside because we may not want the sensitive telemetry to be in the environment that it's exposed to. So we can put that outside. We can pipe it through either through waveguide or cabling or whatever we need to. That way it can be safe from the electromagnetic environment in here. It can be used to monitor the safety and the operation of the system under test. So we work uh, with many customers across the DOD, uh, including Marine Corps, Coast Guard, Army, Air Force, and other uh, even government facilities uh, will come and uh, utilize our facilities here for testing. So this chamber gives us the opportunity to do hands-on test and evaluation of systems uh, to help ensure uh, these systems are safe and operational so that the fleet can meet its mission um, when the time calls.